Okay, welcome to another edition of a Friday edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 488. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm George Conger, and today's February 15th, 2019. Okay, for some reason, the internet today out there in, in video land is slow. As you just saw before, Gavin was a little pixelated. George is a little pixelated. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, our speeds are running fine, but uh, sometimes technology is not bleeding edge enough for Anglican Unscripted. This may be one of those days. George, how was your Valentine's Day? Very good, very good. Didn't do anything exciting. Uh, well, I sat in the waiting room at the emergency room at the hospital. Oh, no. But apart from that, oh, my mother's ill. But mm -hmm. apart from that, it's a quiet week. Sure. Yeah, it is a quiet week. I'm waiting for the weather to change. Still cold up here, but that's that. Um, you and I spent some time together at the last Lambeth, if I remember correctly, two, 2008. You were there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And <clears throat> Lambeth is a production, if it's nothing else. Um, you have agendas. You have talks going on all around this little campus. Uh, you have meetings going on. You have schedules. Uh, you have big blue tents, and I can understand the chaos of planning it. And it's planned on by many people at many different levels, uh, jotting the I's, dotting the T's, uh, to bring in as many uh, bishops from around the world as possible. I get it. It's difficult. Um, right now, George and I are trying to fed out, fetter out some of the information we're getting from Lambeth and others about who is invited and who's not invited. We know right now the ACNA is not invited uh, to attend uh, Lambeth 2020. But there's rumors about, uh, from what I'm hearing, that some of the spouses of some of the um, gay bishops are not allowed to attend. Although I just heard from Justin Welby that they are, everybody's, all spouses are coming. So I have George here to help fix this issue. Jo George? Yes. Yeah, fix it. Fix it. Fix it for us. <laughs> well, just so that you know that the, the last two Lambeth conferences had boycotts. 98 had a group of about a dozen bishops who refused to attend because that would be the first time women bishops were seated. Mm -hmm. And they would not participate. They were all from, uh, from Africa. Uh, uh, 90, uh, 2008, of course, we had uh, a, a good chunk, a, a third or four fifth. Uh, uh, I don't know the exact number. I, 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 you would be safe to say 30%. 30% did not come uh, mm -hmm. over the uh, Gene Robinson affair. And, and Rowan Williams did not invite three bishops. He did not invite two Zimbabwe bishops, Elson Jakazi and Mul Mulbert Kanunga, because they were crooks. They were in bed with Robert Mugabe. They were robbing the church blind, and they were in the process of breaking away and forming their own church free of the Church of the Prophets of Central Africa. They were not asked for good reasons. And then Gene Robinson was not asked to attend. He was specifically told he can't come because you are a partnered gay man and you will be a distract. This is an issue that is dividing us terribly and it would be best if you not be present. Rowan Williams admitted that this there was a tear in the fabric of the communion and the guy at the center that's not, you know, I'm not blaming Robinson here, but the tear, he did not invite. Yeah. And ever since then, we had all these uh, primates meetings and various uh, gatherings and conferences, and the tear has not been resolved. It's gotten worse. And, you know, if you remember, Kevin, the primates meeting in Canterbury, the Episcopal Church was put in a three-year timeout and couldn't participate in inner wider Anglican affairs. Well, that fell apart pretty quickly when uh, Justin Welby uh, basically said, here, give me the ball, I'll run with it. And what he did is he ran off to the sidelines. Well, I, as far as I can tell, at some point in the meeting, he says, okay, who wants to help implement this? Nobody raised their hands. He said, fine, I got it. I know you guys are busy. I got you covered. I will be the person in charge of implementing the um, punishment for the Episcopal Church. And, of course, we know how that turned out. Mm -hmm. So we're now starting the planning of Lambeth 2020, and there's an organization committee. 
and it has a cross section of people, and it's led by the same fellow who put together the last one, uh, Tabo Makoba of South Africa, and he's the only African uh, left wing primate, theologically left wing and politically left wing. Mm -hmm. And he's assembled a team, and it has uh, one or two good good eggs on it. George Sumner, the Bishop of Dallas, is involved. Um, but the brief they've been given, I think, is to avoid taking any actions or making any decisions, to basically have this be <coughs> an extended two-week vacation, a picnic. They've In Daba version 2.0? Yes. In other words, there's nothing really that's going to come out of this other than to meet and greet. Well, Justin Welby, though, has made some changes. He has announced on film that all of the active bishops, diocesan suffragan assistant, are invited. It does not, that does not include, though, the ACNA or the Anglican Church of Brazil. So what does that include? That includes the two now three uh, partnered gay bishops, Kevin Robertson of Toronto, suffragan, Mary Glasspool of New York, a suffragan, and Bishop-elect Thomas Brown of Maine, who was elected last week to be the Bishop of Maine, and he's a partnered gay man. He's married to another priest who lives in the Diocese of Massachusetts. Those, those people are coming. And Andrew Goddard had an, editor, had an article on the Fulcrum website uh, the other day where he essentially said that Justin Welby hasn't explained why things are different now than they were in 2008 when the communion is being torn apart we're far from settling this and this is you would expect that the same rules would apply well Welby has thrown out the rules and then we'll be on videotapes that and all the spouses are coming which nicholas oko for one interpreted as meaning the spouses of everybody who's invited so you would have the three uh, same-sex partners, spouses, married married partners, attending the Lamforth Conference in the capacity of spouses. Well, I uh, contacted uh, Lambeth Palace and said, you know, what do you say about Andrew Goddard's article? What do you say about the spouses? What do you say about the change in uh, plans? And they say, we have no comment. Ask the Anglican Communion Office. They passed the buck. They passed the buck. Oh, so Anglican. Well, the Anglican Communion Office responded and saying and said, well, here's a statement put out by Josiah Adaiwa Faron, and beyond that, we're not going to comment. And Josiah Adaiwa Faron says the gay partnered spouses are not invited. So well, this hold, is... Hold, okay. I, so he says they're not invited. Did that just, that act alone just create two categories of bishops second class bishops and first class bishops uh, well they're also third class bishops well, that's the ACNA. Yeah. uh but there are two classes of bishops uh pure bishops and not so pure bishops i remember i i reminded of a monty python skit about the spanish inquisition where michael palin has a little line uh, heresy by thought heresy by word heresy by deed and what Josiah Wadoa Faron is saying is that we will allow the first two heresies at Lambeth. You can have bad thoughts and you can say bad things, but don't get up to anything in your bedroom at night. We're not going to allow any homosexual hanky-panky during the Lambeth conference. And to prevent this from happening, you can't bring your husbands and wives. So if I were if I were a liberal American bishop, I would I would get pretty rage. <laughs> I'd get pretty annoyed because essentially what it's saying is uh, the Anglican community is saying gay spouses aren't real spouses. Uh, they're not uh, they're not allowed to set foot on the campus with real wives and real husbands. They are uh, they are the impediment, not the bishops who are married to them. So I think I don't know. Well, let me put it this way. The days of Gene Robinson, the super activist gay bishop, has passed, and I don't know how these three uh, bishops are going to want to uh, fight this or make a stink about this. Um, but it, but the logic, uh, theological, intellectual, the mathematical logic of what they're doing is just beyond me. Well, I I can back up a little, even say 
there are a lot of volunteers that help on Lambeth, a lot of them. And a lot of these volunteers are deans at cathedrals who have same-sex partnered married um, <clears throat> interactions, uh, and they're going to bring them with them to this uh, Lambeth 2020, and they'll be on campus, and they will be doing the things that spouses do. Uh, has not Justin Welby and uh, Farone thought of this? Well, in, if I, you know, I do have a some smattering of the way the, the British institutional mind works. Mm -hmm. In England, you're allowed to be a partnered gay bishop. We have uh, two suffragans, mm -hmm. one who uh, part, has a uh, partner and a, a woman who has a, has a partner. However, they have to pledge to be celibate so that they can be, they can say that they're gay, but they're, I guess, non-practicing gay. And so what is being imposed is the British standard. You can be gay by thought and by word, but you just can't do anything while you're in England. And, you know, I guess the English can live with that degree of uh, hypo hypocrisy, but <laughs> I don't know. It just doesn't seem to work. In okay. fact, I actually, my sympathies are with the gay bishops here who are being treated uh, like pariahs. I mean, and here's the thing. They're either pariahs or they're not. They're not half pariahs. I, I remember what I call British think or is uh, Church of England think. When I saw Catherine Jeffert Shorey in protest holding her, her little uh, miter cap as she was walking, uh, processing down a church where she was going to speak because she was not allowed to do it as a uh, presiding bishop. Uh, she, because at that time the Church of England did not have women bishops, mm -hmm. therefore she couldn't act as a bishop while she was in England, mm -hmm. so she reverted to mere priestly status, if you will. Mm -hmm. I, and I have a suggestion for these bishops who are not allowed to bring their spouses. You, at the opening procession, should hold your mitre in your hand and, and process. It would be a great camera shot for uh, Anglican TV and others to, to show that the Church of England and certainly the Communion has uh, added to the tear. Well, Kevin, you're, I, I hate to tell you this, but you're 30 years behind the times. Wait, so you else did this? 20, <laughs> what, 20 years behind the times. It's, it's been 30 years since the bishops had miters at Lambeth because mm -hmm. one of the uh, things that George Carey did to mollify the bishops who didn't like the idea of having women bishops amongst them was to say, we'll just wear choir dress, which is the right. cassock and, sh and shamir with the red or the black uh, gown over a surplus, um, and not have dress in Eucharistic vestments, not wear miters. Hmm. So they haven't worn miters, to my knowledge, since uh, 88. Wow. Because that was over the women. And so they could make a stink uh, <laughs> and bring their miters and just hold them. Oh, but uh, a bit of land of history there, so it'll be interesting. Uh, I haven't decided what you know Anglican TV is going to do because they will record it again. Um, uh, and last time they recorded everything and said, um, "Kevin, we'll, we'll give you copies." Still waiting. Still waiting. Everything that happened in the blue tent, I'm supposed to have a copy of, according to Rowan Williams, and never happened. So we'll have to see what we do in terms of going out to. Uh, uh, Canterbury or uh, Kent University in 2020. Um, anything else you want to talk about, George? No, I think uh, a good uh, uh, ending your week on a good dose of British hypocrisy is always, I think, That's a right. thing. <laughs> a good hip Hippocratic hypocrisy. Oh, I can't talk. I, and I hope people understand today. I can't talk because I was up late last night with a customer. And English, you would think, was my first language. No, not really. Not all the time. Just is what it is. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm George Conger. You've been watching episode 488 of Anglican Unscripted.